meeting to order. We uh, have a special group here, uh, Mayor Ted Denton and the Park Board. We're going to make a presentation of an appointment. So, Mayor. Thank you. City Council members and uh, distinguished guests. Well, almost. <laughs> Um, I am here representing the city tonight. Uh, we're, uh, we're actually doing something that's a first. I've checked with several mayors uh, around the state. Rochester's the first to do this. We are appointing an auxiliary member to our park board who's a high school student. No one else in the state has done this, folks. So this is a big deal. And uh, our park board appointee is uh, Ms. Emma Feldman. Ed, Emma, would you like to join me up here? Could we have a hand for her, please? <laughs> and this uh, letter says Auxiliary Park Board Appointment, March 14, 2016. Be it known to all on this day, March uh, 14, 2016, Ms. Emma Feldman, a student in good standing of Rochester High School, has been appointed by the Honorable Ted Denton, Mayor of Rochester, Indiana, to the Rochester City Park Board. Ms. Feldman will attend regularly scheduled park board meetings on the second Monday of each month at 6 o'clock p.m. at City Hall. And the position is a non-voting position, but Ms. Feldman will be able to participate in the board discussions as a representative of the high school with the presumption of bringing ideas and thoughts to the group from the youth of the community. The position will be for a maximum of one year, after which time Ms. Feldman will receive a letter of recommendation for her participation signed by the park board members as well as the mayor. It's expected that Ms. Feldman will continue to maintain her status in good standing with the school board, maintaining her grade point average and, conduct, and conduct requirements as defined by the school. It's also hoped that the school will allow Ms. Feldman an opportunity to interface with all Rochester students in the capacity of her park board position. Emma? Thank you. Thank you. And now I'd like to recognize our park board members. Would you please stand and identify yourselves? Hi, I'm Kimberly Landis. Welcome. Bob Goodman. Kenny Shedinsky. Steve Coleman. Mason Hyde. And Mason is the uh, city council representative to the park board. And we thank you all very much. And Emma, let's adjourn to your first park board meeting. <laughs> or adjourn to your first meeting, okay? Thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I don't see Adam here. I think he might be feeling a little poorly. But what, what was the process of the selection? Adam Strasser is actually, we have freshman orientation beginning this evening, so Adam is going to start the freshman orientation and greet the parents and then he will be over here. Mayor Denton came to Adam and myself and asked for a representative. And I know that in the future we would like to grow the process. Emma's going to be a wonderful representative and, and I know that she will serve us well as, as well as the park board. And then moving forward, once we have a better feel for what this is going to look like and what this collaboration will be, we would like to grow it into more of a campaign type process and voting process. But with uh, Mr. Denton's time frame and, and some of the testing, ISEP testing and those things going on, we knew Emma would serve that role well and so we've moved forward in that and she will she will be launching that for us and for them and then we'll move forward in regards to that. Yes, our, our initial thoughts, we're going to continue this. Uh, this was something we talked about during the campaign. Who better knows about the park system than our students? <laughs> so this is, this is a first, like I said, uh, and as Superintendent Vance said, uh, the process will I'm sure get bigger and bigger and grow into uh, campaigning in the high school and then the uh, process of voting and then the mayor will appoint the person who wins the election. So it's not only a chance to expand the park board's knowledge by bringing some of the youth onto the park board, but it's also a chance for the high school to learn more about our government process and, and engage these young folks in our city government. Thank you all again.
Are you ready? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Park board will be adjourning across the hall to the meetings. Thanks. Okay, at this time we'll call our regular meeting to order. Uh, we'll have a pledge and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, well, it started with the consent items of the minutes. Uh, we have the minutes of the February 22nd regular board meeting, minutes of the March 2nd special board meeting, minutes, minutes of the March 2nd study session. Uh, are there any additions or corrections? If not, I'll need a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Okay, motion by Sandy. I'll second. Second by Lisa. Any other discussion? All in favor, right? Hey, okay, motion carries. Seven zero. Uh, now we'll move on to the final. Val, <coughs> please. Um, as an update to the format that we're using, I'm going to go through and discuss the beginning and ending uh, balances of the general fund with the expenditures and revenues as well. Um, and then item J is the funds report, and that's where we'll go through and talk about the discussions that happened within. Um, at each of these five funds as well. So general fund um, had a beginning cash balance of $519,912.94, um, $980,391.76 worth of receipts, and then $979,889.16 worth of expenditures, leaving an ending balance of $520,415.54 for the general fund. Debt service fund had a beginning balance of $1,355,085.52. Receipts were $8,663.45 with no expenditures, so an ending balance of $1,363,748.97. Capital projects fund had a beginning cash balance of $795,025.54. Receipts were $4,420, and expenditures were $58,133.87, leaving an ending balance of $741,311.67. Transportation fund had a beginning cash balance of $910,801.05. Receipts were $2,083.48. And then expenditures were $67,773.64, leaving an ending cash balance of $845,110.89. Last but not least, bus replacement fund had a beginning balance of $230,824.33, received for $536.73. No expenses, so the ending balance was or is, I should say, $231, or $231,361.06. That's it for the financial report. Cool. Thanks, Val. Any questions on the claims? If not, the motion approved the financial and funds report. So I move to uh, approve the financial funds report. Okay, motion by Steve. I'll second. And second by Jenny. Inner discussion? On favor, right? Okay, motion carries, 7 0. Okay, under student stakeholder focus, we have uh, quite a few donations. Northern Indiana Community Foundation, uh, the Rochester Telephone Company, for the Riddle PBIS, $150. Walmart Supercenter for Riddle PBIS a bicycle 
and your true value home center, Riddle, PBIS, water bottles, and an outdoor game, Rochester Arby's, the Riddle, PBIS, combo cards, Bibiano's, Riddle, PBIS, five one topping pizzas, the Northern Indiana Community Foundation, uh, this is through the REMC's Operation Roundup, RMS National Honor Society for the Washington, D.C. trip, $1,000. Northern Indiana Community Foundation through the Suzanne and Richard Belcher Fund, Rochester High School Robotics, $250, Northern Indiana Community Foundation through First Federal Savings Bank, High School Robotics Program, $250, Joe McCarter, the high school boys and girls swim team meals purchased at the state finals, $200, Optimus Club, High School Robotics, $400. Rochester Kiwanis Club, High School Life Skill Class for Lunch and Program, $100. Rochester Kiwanis Club, High Key Club for Lunch and Program, $100. Fulton County Waste District, High School FFA Volunteering Services, $75. Rochester Optimist Club, RMS 8th grade breakfast, $500. Fulton County Solid Waste District, High School Student Council Volunteering Service, $75. Are there any other? It didn't go through our books, but the Alchemist Club also donated $500 for our DC trip, but our parent organization is running that by <coughs> They do so much for us, I just want to acknowledge. Okay, 500 dollars yeah. for the DC trip. Okay, got a motion to approve claims. Put the addition of uh, the Optimus $500 DC trip. So moved. Red? For a second? Sandy? Okay, motion for Brad, second by Sandy. Any other questions? No favor, right now. Okay, motion carries seven two. Thanks thank again thank for all the. Yeah, yeah this, uh, blessed. It seems like each meeting they get better. So yeah. we are truly really blessed with the generosity of the community. Okay, the overnight field trip uh, with Jag. Um, our Jag program held a regional meeting. And at that time, we had four students advance to the state round. Emily Hines, Brianna Zeiger, King Stavdahl, and Austin uh, Cheskowski Chis mm -hmm. um, advanced from regional to the state program. And um, I know that this is coming in after the overnight trip. Um, one of the first glitches was we didn't realize that they would be providing the busing, the transportation. So actually the JAG program and Work One Development provided um, busing for the students to go down to the state and then there was a change in hotel reservations that the state made. So by the time Brenda had all of the paperwork in front of her, it's getting to you just a bit late, but those four were able to participate in the state competition after qualifying through the regional and uh, just wanted to recognize them as well. Everybody have a chance to look at the application for field trip. Mm -hmm. and are there any questions? If not, we motion to approve the uh, JAG field trip or not. So moved. Okay, motion by Lisa. Second. Second by Sandy. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, Mr. Carey, it says it. I see uh, Adam come in. Uh, moved to his part of the program. I think he was up next. We're ready for your presentation on valedictorian and salutatorian as well as your recommendation for the weighted course changes. Okay. Um, currently, uh, Rochester High School um, names the valedictorian and salutatorian after the seventh semester of high school, so that would be after the first semester of senior year. Um, with the way we're offering courses now with weighted courses, um, we felt that it would be more fair to make that determination at the end of the eighth semester of high school at the end of their senior year. 
Uh, the reason being, um, we have some classes now that are one semester weighted classes, and we can't guarantee that every senior gets to take that first semester. So the GPA could significantly change um, based on when your course is following your schedule. So um, based on uh, my feedback from my staff and my guidance counselor, we feel that moving that determination to the end of eight semesters is a better choice. Do you guys have any questions about that? I think we've talked in study session mm -hmm. about it. Uh, it answered a lot of questions there. Anybody have anything else? Mm -hmm. And this would, it's a great move. And this would begin with next year's? Yes, this would start with next year's senior class. So it would be effective at the beginning of next school year. What was the part that held us back? Was that just the hand grading? And now that we're computer grading, does that make it go faster, do you think? Um, that's probably one one reason. I mean, it does make um, planning for graduation a little more tight. It compresses all the things that you have to get done, but we feel like you know that is a no reason to possibly deny a student the chance to be valedictorian uh, based on their full academic career at Rochester High School. I think it's a more fair way to determine that. We now often have almost a week, even even a week, in between the end of year and graduation, where years ago, there were years that we'd go to school on Thursday and have graduation Friday night, and so that would be near to impossible. So I, think, I think the number of students taking college classes as well that second semester has increased dramatically as well, and we want to make sure that we're honoring that effort the second semester of their senior year as well and continue to encourage them to do that. Okay, any more questions? Thanks, Adam. I know you're busy and have feedback. <laughs> I got one more thing. I got one more? Okay. Do we want to vote? Oh, yeah, okay. Vote vote on on let's go, yeah, let's go ahead and vote on this uh, implementation of the uh, eight semesters for this. So I'll need a motion to approve that. I move that we change our valedictorian and salutatorian uh, selection until the end of eight semesters of their high school career. Second. And move. Motion by Jenny. Second by Don. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carried 7-0. Now we'll continue on with the leader. Um, another item that we've been looking at the high school is our current offerings that are considered weighted classes. Um, what a weighted class is, is it's an incentive for students to take the most difficult and rigorous classes that you have at the high school. So a weighted class is on a five-point scale instead of a four-point scale. So if you get an A in a weighted class, you get a five-point addition to your GPA, um, whereas if you get an A in an unweighted class, it's a four-point addition. So we're supposed to be some incentive for students to take those most difficult classes. Um, and typically those are dual credit classes and AP classes that are supposed to be very rigorous and to the same standard that a college course would be for a student. So when we were looking at our um, weighted course list that we currently have, we felt that there were some classes on that list that don't meet that standard of being a college level dual credit or AP class. And um, you can unfairly skew a student's GPA to the high end by offering classes that are not extremely rigorous, that they're very likely to get an A in, um, and, and then get that five point jump when they're not taking a very rigorous class. Um, so what, what we'd like to do is pare back the amount of weighted classes we have um, so that really what we're offering dual credit for are classes that are dual credit, or what we're offering weighted for are classes that are dual credit and AP level classes. Um, so yeah, it pairs it back within half of what we currently offer. And to be completely fair, what we'd like to do is start this with the class of 2020, which would be the incoming freshman, so that everybody in the class has the exact same amount of attempts at, at weighted classes. So to make it a fair shape for every student. Does anybody have any questions about that? Do you feel this will help with the enrollment of those classes due to the fact that people won't shy away from them? Fearing that is the thought behind having a weighted course is that um, even though it's very strenuous and rigorous and you might not be able to get a 99 or 98% final grade on that weighted class still allows it to not negatively affect your GPA. I 
appreciate Adam looking at what it's always hard to define what is rigorous because obviously what is rigorous to one person isn't necessarily rigorous to someone else. Um, and I think looking at AP or dual credit classes as that next level makes sense. Um, and then looking at this then, what about foreign language three or biomed three rose to that level? Well, um, actually at the start of this year, foreign language three was uh, a dual credit class and we continued using that same curriculum um, even though we're not able to, to offer the dual credit through IU at this time, we're going to continue with that same college level curriculum that we were utilizing before. So we feel like the course is still very rigorous and difficult, and we hope that um, in time we'll be able to bring um, that dual credit option back to foreign language three. Okay, I didn't realize that. So students in foreign language three were able to have the college credit as part of that? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and uh, biomed? biomed is as a group um, is college dual credit. So to get the dual credit for biology, you have to complete all four years to get, um, and then you get the chunk. Oh, okay. um, so really, all the classes are dual credit, but you have to complete them all in order to get it. Um, so we thought the top two levels of that, um, you know, are, are a higher level of that, and they are dual credit. Um, so before it was biomed two, three, and four, we felt a more fair assessment. Uh, was three and four because um, there seems to be an increase in the difficulty after that second year. And then for the project Lead the Way, um, I see in our current weighted courses, it's all of them except for the introductory course. And then for the next, for the proposed, it's dual credit project Lead the Way. How many, what's the difference there? We currently offer two um, engineering classes that are not dual credit. Um, that is aerospace, uh, engineering, and uh, computer, CIM, I don't remember what they are, computer integrated manufacturing. Um, they are good classes and we think they have good purpose, but they're not uh, currently dual credit classes. So we felt at this time uh, they should not be included. If they do reach the time where they become dual credit, we thought the phrasing that we included would allow them to then be uh, bumped into that group. Thank you for your work on this, Adam. This is something that has um, been a great interest to me over the last several years, and I really appreciate what it looks like now. Thank, Thank you. you for doing that. <coughs> you have a question? Okay, thank you, Adam. I need a motion to approve the uh, winter course change to be implemented with incoming freshmen. I move that we accept the changes to the weighted courses beginning with the class of 2020. I second that. Motion by Lisa, <coughs> second by Steve. Any discussion? Okay. Hey, most carried. Thank you, Adam. I shared with you we'd be headed back over yeah. to freshman orientation. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't trying to get rid of it. <laughs> I need to get busy. Tom, before Adam leaves, I would like to mention that I was talking to a friend of Tom's from Speedway, a man by the name of uh, Chuck Bennett. Uh, Chuck is now a guidance counselor. He taught with Adam uh, some years ago, and he said, we'd love to have him back. And I said, you can't have him. So, <laughs> I just want to let, let it be known that those who know Adam from his earliest days of teaching still want him back. <laughs> He's been a great asset. Great asset. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Not for sharing. Yes. <laughs> no. Okay, next item, uh, approval to purchase and trade the maintenance trailer. And I uh, will respectfully turn this over to Valerie. She's had a lot of conversation with our maintenance crew and the reasoning behind this and, and uh, the proposals and the three um, quotes that we received. In your board packet are three quotes for options on the maintenance trailer. The one that we have right now, it doesn't have any sides to it, and what it's used for is um, for the lawnmowers are driven on it, um, the ramps. Um, after the goal was to um, transport the lawnmowers around all the different locations, mow, and as you would um, with that, and then it was found that due to the lack of sides, it's a safety concern, and then the ramps on the that the current trailer has to get onto it is not very safe either. So what they've been using it for is for 
hauling dirt, mulch, topsoil things, like larger things where it's an easy scoop off, drop on type of deal. And um, they've, the company or the, that we've, the, the current trailer was purchased from um, has offered to buy it back. Um, and to trade us for a trailer with sides. It's a little bit shorter, which is why we get cash back in our pocket because it's a little bit of a smaller size. It has that safety feature with the rails on the sides. The ramps are, um, it's a full gate down ramp, so there's no question of wheels falling off of the ramps. So the, the safety is insurmountable. Um, I've talked to both uh, Brian and Jim on the maintenance and they're all for um, this trade and, and I asked for more quotes from there just to make sure that the due diligence uh, was obtained of, of what options are and elsewhere and other competitive bids from there. So it's recommended. Um, I believe the company is out in Napanee. I don't know the name of it. Oh, of thank you. Um, yeah, it's out in Napanee and it's the, I should say Elkhart. Thank you. It's Napanee Street in Elkhart. But we get $765 back. Um, on the trade of the current trailer and uh, gets us what what's more practical that we need to know. So we're trading in and getting money back. Sounds like a win win. Especially if you can't really put a price tag on safety. So Yeah. It's true. That's amazing, is that much difference in uh One's a, a wash, one gives us money, and the other one wants $1,647 yeah. on top of our trailer. So it looks like an obvious choice there. And we're comparing apples to apples. It's mm -hmm. obviously a little bit shorter, it'll carry what we need to carry it. Exactly. <laughs> How old is the old trailer? You know? 2012. I don't. 2012, I think well, I said, okay. the trade. On one of the quotes. On that, then? Okay. Okay, yeah, that is. Mm. Any questions? I don't need a motion to approve. Do we need a motion to approve because there's a trade? That was because my this, this this is within the spending limit that you can just decide. My concern was just being honest in regards to it being a trade that we were um, a piece of equipment that was purchased through through the school that everybody had that knowledge that we would be trading that in. It was just an effort to be transparent with our equipment and what we were doing with it. The fact that we're getting money back on top of that. <laughs> it's a smaller trailer just to be transparent. <laughs> It's a 16 foot trailer we have now. We're going down to a 14 foot trailer. Just okay. as a full width ramp right down exactly. to partial. Exactly. They hold long more on too. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Have a motion. Looks like tech works. Uh, would be a bid we'd accept. I think a motion we accept TechWorks bid that they will pay us back $765. We get the 7 by 14 trailer and we trade in our 8 by 16 for the 2012 trailer. Okay. Motion by Red. Second. Second by Any other discussion? All in favor? Any motion carried? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item. We have the <clears throat> personnel report. Resignation. Genevieve Pittman, Megan uh, McLaughlin's third grade maternity leave. <coughs> Last day, March 18th. Make sure I understand. Genevieve is currently doing that and is going to. Correct. Okay. Then uh, retirement of Paul Helstern, middle fifth grade teacher, the end of the 2016 school year. Then uh, family medical leave, Paul Helstern, uh, leave date is March 21st and will end at the end of the school year. Are there any questions? 
Second on the motion to approve the personnel report. So moved. Any motion by Jenny? Second. Yeah, second. Yeah. Second. Any yeah. discussion or questions? All in favor? Do we have somebody to take the return waiting? Motion carries 7 0. Mm -hmm. You'll need somebody to fill in for mm -hmm. okay. Additionally, um, later this afternoon, your there is a list of spring coaches that was submitted, and I know that was late. Um, I would recommend if we could to approve those hirings. I know it was submitted at the last minute, and there are a lot of names on there. If the board would like to. Um, wait until next month that's very much understandable many of those names are um, seasoned coaches and are returning um, to us again this year so would respectfully like to bring that to your attention as as one of the personnel report items that possibly we could take care of this evening did the pay remain the same as last year the pay would be um, based on at the in the fall we adopted a new collective bargaining agreement and part of that was the um, adjustment within that ECA schedule we cleaned a lot of that up we added the new sports and new activities that um, uh, the school has brought on as a district and at the same time we went through and cleaned up those things we no longer offer so what you see there would be reflective of what was adopted this fall in the collective bargaining agreement What would the board like to do? Uh, <clears throat> uh, wait till the next meeting. There is no urgency on this. No. Um, the so spring sports are starting, so um, as soon as we return from break, they will be uh, in full cycle. Does anybody uh, have questions? Would like to wait till next meeting, or to go ahead and take care of it tonight? As far as I'm concerned, I'm not one of the boys, but most of them are familiar names and those are our teachers that have already been vetted, so I'm not going to be concerned there. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So Okay, uh, Sandy made a motion to approve the uh, schedule for the uh, spring coaches. Second. And second by Don. Uh, I do have a question. Oh, question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ted or Superintendent, do you know if the new state requirement for the assistant coaches to be to have the concussion training is which is coming down the pike for all schools? We were on our way to having our own good policy. Now it's been taken out of our hands. Uh, do you know if that includes volunteer assistance? Um, the way that we were treating volunteer assistance, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that if they are um, a volunteer assistant who could potentially be left with a group of kids by themselves for a long period of time then they would receive that training if they were an assistant in a larger group and weren't going to be left with those students then they would not necessarily need that and we are gearing up to present that concussion training and additional training over spring break this year so that everybody will be ready once spring sports are, are going okay that's 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 our decision right um, that's that's what we're doing, but the state is having their own. Right. The state adopted a new statute yeah. that, that uh, comes into effect June one. June one. Is it June one? Or yeah, June 1? it'll be June one. June one. And and does that require all volunteer that assistance? I can't tell you. Okay, I can't tell you. That'll be a part of Neola's new packet in that way. And honestly, because we chose to include most coaches in there. It, <laughs> We can exceed what the state requires. Yeah. Yeah, but as we were exceeding what the state required, they just upped the ante at the yeah. legislature. That's that's where the question is right yeah. now. Well, I I just would want to. I mean, we have a lot of volunteer assistants. I think that's wonderful, and I wouldn't want to overburden volunteers. You know. But concussion training, we can take a plan with volunteer now too. I think, and this may be some for study session, maybe not at a board meeting, but I think all those volunteers should have at least the concussion training just to cover us. Um, and it's not so much so 
to harvest to inconvenience you or something it's like not, that. It's, it's not hours and hours and no. Uh, I think there's an online course, and I think Christina does it as well. Mm -hmm. It's not a burden. And, it, and frankly, I think we all feel better as coaches having that at least under our belt. Yeah. I can't speak for them all, but that's the way I perceive it. Any other questions? You in motion? Second? Yeah. Don't second. Well, I thought you said second question. You say second question. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Okay. So we got a second stand. <laughs> okay, we have a motion second to, to approve. Uh, all in favor, right in. Okay, motion carried. So we did. Thank you. Okay, uh, approval of Jason Snyder's contract. At our last meeting, the board approved Jason um, as the interim principal through the June 30th date when all administrative contracts come to closure. Um, kudos to Brenda Troyer for really going through. We had to make sure that we took care of Jason's teacher contract first and then rolled him over to an administrative contract. Uh, Brenda and I met with Jason last week in regards to solidifying the number of days that would be on that contract because we have that June time where we're really not in session, but administrators are most certainly working and, and gearing up for the next school year. So it was agreed upon that Jason's contract would be for 71 days at um, the standard pay rate that would be reflective of his three years of administrative experience. So those 71 days would equate to $25,347 for his administrative contract. And information was sent to you in regards to how we figured out the teacher contract and then rolled him over to um, an administrative contract and what was reflective of the days in June that he would be expected to work. Anybody have any questions? Not need a motion to approve Jason Snyder's contract. So moved. Okay. Second read. Second by Sandy. Any discussion? All in favor? Any? Any motion carried? Still going well there. It is. And Jason was very disappointed he couldn't be here this evening. He's feeling under the weather and he actually left a little bit early today, so sent his apologies and and um, was anxious to hear that everything went well tonight, so I'll make sure that I text him and let him know that. Yeah. And just a comment on that, too. Uh, it was very fair, of course, for him to have the administrative start February 29th. That was when we approved that moving forward. But in our December meeting, we did, knowing that Mrs. McMahon was on family medical leave, that he would step in for those times. And that was part of his ECA pay. But um, he has really stepped in and filled that position well, and I hear that from multiple, multiple areas when I'm in that building. He's done a nice job. He's joined our administrative team in our meetings, and he's chimed in and moving really well over there. So we're excited about the things that he's doing. Good. Any other business? Um, just a reminder that on April 7th, we will have our first evening study session. Um, it's an attempt to allow more people in the in the community to be able to attend those evening sessions. So we will meet on April 7th at 6 p.m. at uh, Central Office there in the boardroom and then would invite the community to attend if you'd like to see that behind the scenes work. Sandy was just commenting with the weighted courses that's been discussed for months and months and months and then you see a three minute snippet here. So we want to invite the community and <laughs> unfold and, and how that comes to fruition here at the board meeting. So again, April 7th at 6 p.m. Last year, uh, the board approved to open swim for the pool um, as we deemed it appropriate to open it up after uh, sports were concluded and those seasons had ended. So we anticipate the opening of the pool on April 13th. We will have it open on Monday and Wednesday evenings from 6 to 8 p.m. if anybody in the community would like to join the open swim. Uh, just a gentle reminder to parents, I'm sure students are aware, but uh, to parents at the conclusion of school this Friday, we will start our two-week spring break. So next week we would be off for spring break, and then intercession is March 28th through the 31st, so if there are still students who need that remediation time, please contact your building level principals and counselors, and we'll do our best to make sure we get them in for remediation. 
the Sentinel did a really nice article, and, and I know that our tech team has worked on posting on our website. The e-learning weekend is scheduled for April 9th, and there are contact numbers and office hours, everything that you'll need to know about e-learning, and then each of the building principals will be sending home their own information. It'll look a little bit differently for each of those uh, building and grade levels, so you want to make sure that the information going out is appropriate for each of those. So parents will be seeing that come home and a lot of communication there. And then kudos to, to Julie, the board is transitioning to Board Docs. It's a program that will go paperless and uh, Julie was able to get that information in. So our anticipation is that next month we will be completely paperless and both the board and, and the community will be able to see everything right there on our home uh, website and link to Board Docs and you'll see the agenda in its entirety and, and those things that are necessary to run the meeting, but hopefully without the paper to the best of Julie and my ability to get that to you. So I think that's all that I have. Thank you. Does the board have any questions or comments? I'm going to need additional training. <laughs> um, Jenny wanted me to share, and I shared with the administrative team and with the board and with our district as a whole, that the week of April 11th, I will be representing Rochester schools at Johns Hopkins um, uh, University, the educational portion of that. It's uh, in conjunction with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Rochester was um, seen as a front runner in regards to how we track data, how we look at early warning intervention signs with our youth, um, my determination and conversations at the state level to make sure we continue to do that through through Pivot and through Five Star and having those communications with parents. They appreciated very much our um, collaboration with Four County and having those in each of our buildings and, and the philosophy that if we don't have students who are mentally, emotionally, and physically sound, we're never gonna get that education to them. So I will be representing our district and hopefully that will open some doors and, and some communication at a different level that we can bring back to Rochester and they are noticing that we're on the forefront of that. So it'll be um, a great opportunity. So thank you, Jenny, for mentioning that. Isn't that a little more than representing our district? Isn't there only one person for the state? There's one person for the state of Indiana and then there's a superintendent um, I believe that he is from Georgia who will be representing as well. So we're, we're uh, I'm, I'm honored to, to represent the district. So to translate, you're being very humble when we're at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the district as a whole, teachers and administrators are doing a great job. Absolutely. We are, I am surrounded by wonderful people who engage in that same philosophy and, and really rally around that. And when I shared with the administrative team what that might look like moving forward, there was a lot of excitement. and. And I think that uh, so many times people believe that we come in at eight and we leave at three and, and we share uh, educational materials, but um, our staff does so much more than that. And uh, we are blessed and humbled by the, the personnel that we have here. But it is really a big honor for Jana and uh, we're blessed to have her and have her represent uh, our school system there. And, uh, you know, people across the country don't hear about Rochester Community Schools, so that is quite an honor. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Hopefully it'll open some more doors and sometimes the best just being able to sit down and brainstorm and listen and learn from others is, is, is a lot of what you can bring back and share. So I will be uh, thankful and grateful to do that for our district. Okay, anything else for Well, between you and the mayor. We are going. <laughs> Tim, Tom, I found the digest of the bill about the coaches, and it uh, is effective July 1, 2017, so we've got a year. Okay. And then once the uh, program starts, uh, the Indiana Department of Education has to establish what the program will be, then it has to be uh, taught by a physician. So uh, mm -hmm. even though Christina knows everything she does and is very, very effective at it, we'll have to find a doctor and then. Uh, I assume that means they'll be putting on clinics around the state for it, but there is no distinction between volunteer coaches and, or assistant coaches and uh, uh, paid coaches. So it's a little more extensive training than having I mean, doctor involved. Right, but it'll be a year off before yeah. 
code name for you. So. And I think we're well on our way to making sure that we meet that. I mean, we're going through those trainings, that communication is happening, and, and we know what that entails. So I feel like we're, we'll be on board when we're done. Yeah. Anybody in the audience have anything to say? Um, open swims, is there a cost to that? Because I know I'll be getting those phone calls. There is. <laughs> I will follow that out to everybody. There are, uh, there's going to be a per evening cost and then there will be family passes. So I'll make sure that I email that all out to, to building level. That's a good point. I'm sure that will, that will be coming up. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good question, Danny. Anybody else? If not, uh, thanks everybody for coming. We'll join the meeting. Thank <laughs> you.